A faithful friend is beyond price, since he regards his friend's misfortunes as his own and suffers with him, sharing his trials until death. This is a quote from St. Maximus the Confessor in the 4th century. And I think it's um, pretty relevant to our conversation today because this is our first guest episode. Uh, so it's going to be rough. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, but I am today joined by a friend that I've known for a long time and actually uh, kind of briefly mentioned in the first episode um, talking about where this all originated so i'm gonna do this the swedish way i'm gonna introduce you not as what you do but who you are all right so my guest today is owen um i believe we met (laughs) 13 years ago roughly at a comic book store in regina and um we've been friends since then we've lived in the same city here and there other times we haven't Um, And we've been on a quite similar journey, I think, in a lot of ways. And um, when it comes to both being, I guess, creative types, but also on a personal journey of kind of self-realization and asking some questions, what is this all about? I think you were one of the first people that I really connected with on that. So um, my guest today is Owen. Uh, Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, happy to be here. I wanted to, um, (laughs) I'm going to start by reading something to you. I plan. I planned this um, when I was thinking about how to do this episode. So, I mentioned in, in the very first episode, Book of Man, mm-hmm. right? And that was something that you and I had actually talked about. So, if you're wondering what that was about, it was in a story that we, we've been trying to work, figure out for a long time. Like, comic book or is a game for a while. It kept on coming up over and over again. And I think it was a few years ago where I was like, I think we're just supposed to be good friends. That's what this is about. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. I think that's maybe what we're missing. <laughs> <laughs> the Book of Man is just our story. But I'm going to read something to you. And I just want to see what you think. So the world of the Book of Man is a primitive one, a biblical one. Tribes war over land, ancient blood feuds, and for sport, adorned in animal hides, brandishing weapons made of bone and stone. The people of this world are perpetually stuck in an era of darkness, unable to pursue a meaningful existence beyond blood and death. In this place, two mortal enemies, Herod and Silas, come together in one final battle, Herod to protect his tribe and Silas to claim chieftainship over his clan in a show of power. As Herod and Silas's weapons cross, the sky above them darkens as red lightning rips across the horizon. And from the swirls of black cloud, an obsidian obelisk arcs toward the earth. It is a herald of doom, the destruction of all things. As the obelisk plunges into the earth, a creature of metal and flesh, a monstrous knight, emerges from its cast shadow. And there's an image here that you drew, Owen. Um, (laughs) The characters are clearly us. (laughs) Fighting this this monster. Okay. (laughs) Together, Herod and Silas fight desperately to destroy it to protect the lives of both their tribes. Powerless in its wake, flaccid against the might of an ancient god, they fail to save what they love. Once more, the sky shudders, and their gre- in their grief, they turn eyes to the heavens and, as, and watch as a dozen more obelisks fall upon the earth far away on the horizon. The Book of Man is the story of Herod and Silas, former enemies forced in dire circumstances, a bond, a love, and brotherhood forged in trauma and loss, Together they face the darkness, the monsters that rose from the obelisks, their sworn enemy, the Grimmer. So, are we gay? <laughs> I was like, that sounds good. I was like, this is good. This is good stuff. Anyway. That is so funny. Yeah. Uh, so much that you said there really resonates. I think that's very funny. About the idea of just wanting to be friends. I think this goes back to the work idea as well, yeah. where I think with men, a lot of times we feel like we have our work relationships. Maybe it's especially true yeah. in comics, but if you're not working with someone, you're not talking to them enough, you lose track. Because we, we we work with people and these jobs, and then when the job's done, you stop interacting. But sometimes you make real bonds with these people. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of what I realized about our our friendship is I think we always kind of confused it with the work, which is, again, this is something I talk about. It happens with men all the time where it's this you are the work so when i relate to you it's a work relationship yeah i think in the last few years it's been like yeah we talk about 
art and we'll, we'll get into that later but it's yeah it, it, oh it's just that I mean, we're good friends <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's a nice thing to realize i think I, I think it is i talk about this a lot too there's there's people in in my life that i, I used to call them men of heart right and men in particular that you just have this connection with that you don't really understand the mask drops and you can just connect easier and i think i realized that that we talked about this a few weeks ago i think it's because we're seekers of truth right and so if you were a seeker of truth you kind of get all the preamble out of the way you, you get down to it and you, and you are vulnerable and not worried about wearing this mask of oh, like, what if owen doesn't think i'm cool right first of all we're old no one's cool mm -hmm. <laughs> at our age but yeah I, th I think that's um it was an interesting realization that I think opened up our friendship in, in a way that didn't exist before that because we separated the art from what who we were to, as friends. Yeah, I think there's an interesting thing that ha interesting thing that happens when that you do get that connection with someone where it creates a shorthand. Yes, I would probably have that with her wives too. I certainly yeah. have it with with my wife where we she knows what I'm thinking. And even you being having moved away, I still felt connected. Like I knew yeah. what you were going through, all these, all these things. It almost, and this might be my own. I've brought this up with my wife before, but maybe it's a bit of arrogance or something that I assume people know what I'm thinking. Sometimes <laughs> certain people, like <laughs> like you don't, you, you're not aware that I I thought this. Having to talk to people and catch everyone up. This is modern conversation a lot of times when you when you run into someone you haven't maybe someone new mm. or someone you haven't seen in a while yeah. the, the painful part is always going through all the right. ticking all the boxes of the, this conversation we've all had a hundred times yeah. so just clear it out get it up like some sort of i'm this or whatever here's these things and you have to, you have to talk about these subjects whereas with you when you have a real connection with someone yeah. you don't do any tick any boxes you can get right to honest conversation yeah i this is so the, the, kind of the intro i was that's the swedish way that i remember when i first moved there and my friend introduced me to one of his friends and he didn't go oh this is curtis he's a writer which is how i was always introduced you know that was always... and probably how you introduced yourself exactly like, i'm a writer I, I i work in games uh or whatever i work in comics it was a really cool introduction you know this is my friend um, this is where we met and this is kind of like our relationship now and how we stay in touch what we bond over I immediately knew that person way better than, oh, this is my friend, he's a musician. Yeah. I did, and, and that, I think, has really stuck with me that it's such a, it's a much better way to identify or introduce people because you're getting to the person. Yeah, I think you had told me that right shortly after you had moved and I started yeah. implementing it. It just yeah. made so much sense because yeah. I didn't want to be associated with, and sort of I had stopped working uh, in comics and then what happens like if I'm not actively drawing comics right. am I a comic artist at all so using that as my job <laughs> or working on a video game but it, it it's not for a publisher is it anything like which is uh, kind of nice removes an identity talk, talk about that what was that realization and then going into putting that away as an identity yeah this is a fascinating thing about creating art where if you stop caring what what are the major main drivers of creating any work anyway? Yeah. It's to impress, you know, well, you know, maybe make money or impress <laughs> your friends or family, maybe impress your coworkers. Like I want to be this, get a major video game out with my name on it, a movie or a comic alongside. Gotta get that so credit. So. Get that credit. The credit, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that. Maybe peers is another one. There's a couple things that can be a motivation to do the work. But if you distance yourself from those things, mm. like, I don't need to impress anyone. What do yeah. I want to do? It's sometimes hard to create work in this space because mm. you'd have no driver anymore. Like, sometimes these things... Did you ever see that documentary on Michael Jordan? I didn't, know. It was interesting because this guy is super high performing, maybe one of the best of all time, if mm -hmm. not the best. And he was driven a lot of times by uh, anger. Like, uh, I've got to destroy this other person. It's really? all, all born out of... His excellence born out of... A bit of pettiness, pettiness maybe you know oh, like yeah. of needing to be the best to beat someone like you would you would pick someone and like being <laughs> like i am going to destroy this guy which is a fascinating thing but it's it's still creating motivation motivation to keep pushing if you mm. don't have anything then what are you doing if just something you've got to think about deal with and there are reasons and some of it can just be for love of the art i guess that's the purest form is to find yeah. do something for the love which is another thing i want to talk about too the concept of loving things too yeah absolutely well 
and maybe that's you know one of the things we talked about is that reevaluation maybe leads to uh, the question of why you're doing it why do the art and maybe the driver before i mean as you get older drivers in general change right so maybe it is a transition a transition from being better or getting the credit to doing it i have to tell this story or i just i want to i just want to enjoy living in this world i'm creating i think it's a, it's really interesting because i've been having conversations even with people i work with now around the same thing you start thinking about all the demands and all the oh the schedule and, and all this stuff but and it takes you away from the work itself but what yeah what is what is driving it you've been working on something kind of intermittently what was that process like where you put all the identifiers away and then you just started making something like yeah that. so this is a graphic novel i just started working on on my own writing drawing mm -hmm. color just trying to do everything myself but again this one was more born out of experiments versus i need to tell this story it wasn't oh, really a story it was just a more <laughs> i need to learn how to tell my story or how yeah. do i write how do i do any of this it was more practice yeah. than a this is a driving thing and and a, also, here's another thing about telling stories, which is different than doing the work, because you can have a story in your head, you can have an elaborate narrative sure. in your brain, yeah. and it can just stay there. This is yeah. the other thing. If you stop caring what other people think, then do you need to even put it out in the world? We talk about this. Yeah, we have. <laughs> and I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, val, it's, it's val, this is the thing, getting back to that space of I you do need to do work and create something out in the yeah. world. It's, it's very valuable. Yeah, well, you, you brought this up. And my position is that you know, I believe that we we have been gifted with with certain skills or interests, right? And you know, I think you see the world in a very interesting way, and you're also an artist, which means that you have the ability to translate those unique perspectives into something that people can, for the you know, cynical consume. <laughs> right. I, I hate that term, but and then I, I for me, I I weirdly think it's a responsibility. I'm trying to look at it that way too and i like it that's a good motivation as good as any but it is kind of yeah the universe is demanding which maybe is a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> i think the universe you know oh, i was trying I, i'm trying not to get into too spiritual weirdness <laughs> stuff but i think the universe already sees it it's already got right. finished copies of all the ideas in your head you don't need to do anything but on this earthly realm you do <laughs> you know this is why yeah it's important to get the work in I think coming from the background that we did, working in, working in the the comics industry, which is a, it's pretty brutal. the The workload is so high, especially for artists, writers. We we get a pretty easy pass on it for the most part, but the workload is so high, the burnout is so high, and it's. I remember you saying when we uh, worked together previously on Rat Queens that you just wish you had more time to put the love in into into the page, but the industry doesn't allow it. You know, and so it kind of makes you cynical about art. And I'm, did you feel that way? Like, did you feel a little bit burned oh, out? There was definitely this thing about deadlines where, what was the idea that if I could get more time, however more time you gave me, the more time I would put into the book. But the industry doesn't understand that. They sort of... Uh, or care. Really. Or care, yeah. yeah. Um, just playing around with... Yeah, you know, in a way, deadlines are helpful. Mm -hmm. This is having not done any work in a while and sort of wanting to experiment a bit with having deadlines again, just to push myself <laughs> and like, just let's see, let's yeah. let's try. And I, I think these are good practices. It's always a fine line with things where sometimes there is a bit of help if you're if you're going too slow and maybe you need a push. But as an artist, of course, to create your best work, having all the time you need would be ideal. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things about my published work when people ask me what I've done and I don't like recommending any of it because I don't feel I've done a good job on any of it. I feel like I've yet to represent what I, th I feel like I can do on paper. That's and this is because, you know, time or, you know, maybe I'm just not good enough. But I yeah. think if we, if we could work that European model of, that's the dream, you know, <laughs> well, 11 pages a month or something, that's even, yeah. that's even maybe too much, something reasonable, two pages a week. Imagine. I, I think we're one of the things we were talking about this week, just just online, is the idea of also getting older, and especially as an artist, you're at the table eight to ten hours if you want to try to put stuff out. But it's getting harder as we oh, get older. Oh, it's almost impossible. This is the other thing about trying some new work. Now I'm starting again to do some paid comic work, trying to treat it almost like a job, in not 
put my soul into it, not <laughs> break, hurt my back over it, limit the time, just be effective and efficient. Try and take, you know, the ego, the creativity, this has got to be perfect and just oh, yeah. make it as good as I can within the realm with some constraints. I've been going so. through this myself too. This idea of what master are you serving <laughs> when you're doing the work? So you're serving the corporate master. Do, do a good job, but you know, you don't need to break your heart over it. But if it's your own stuff, if it's a master of something that you want to do for yourself or a story that you want to tell or an expression, then that's where you maybe do that. Maybe you break yourself. Yeah, and hopefully <laughs> instead it's more pure love and yeah. enjoyment. These are these things, these ideas of trying to approach it also. Same as a job too, but also yeah. have fun with it. I, I'm trying to, I've, I feel like I've learned a lot in these past couple of years of where to mentally place all this so that hopefully I can balance it all. Sure. And we'll, we'll see. The physical element too is an interesting one, getting older. Because we're both, <laughs> we're uh, both, we could talk about it, we're both sort of injured right now, which is a very <laughs> funny thing. Uh, it also has to do with getting older. Oh, dude. Yeah. There was a, um, a newsletter by someone that we both know had, he had mentioned um, something about all his friends reaching 50, and some of them are, their bodies are completely bagged. And yeah. this is very relatable to yeah. me that we're getting to this age where it really hits uh, physically. And so instead of exercising to get in better shape, we have to start exercising just to maintain, just, it's to, just suffer. to exist. Yeah, yeah. Suffer, not to suffer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to. Before we go further into the getting old thing, I want to talk a little bit about when you were young, where, mm -hmm. so we grew up closely in proximity in the same province. I talked about where I grew up in Saskatchewan. You also grew up in Saskatchewan. Um, just tell a little bit about your life, uh, where you grew up and you don't have to go into details about your family, but kind of the... Yeah, Saskatchewan, that's a prairie town, prairie, you know, the it's prairie the province. The flatlands, the farmers. Flatlands. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, and I think that's interesting that we have that. Every time I meet someone from Saskatchewan, we usually bond. And it might be like that yeah. everywhere, but I feel like there's a kind of uh, politeness and friendliness that from the prairies. I think it's a very good trait. Yeah, yeah my, my, nice. my wife said that, you know, she grew up here in Vancouver. And when we would go back to visit my family, she was all, that was something that struck her, that people wore who they said they were. Yeah, yeah. Which she wasn't necessarily used to that here on the West Coast. Sorry, BC, but... It's right. right. That's right. <laughs> so you, you grew up in uh, in the city. And what was life like growing up in, I guess, in a smaller city in Saskatchewan and, and within your family? Where did the creative spark come from? Where oh, did like, yeah. it like, like, start there? How right. did that happen? Is there a lot of creative people in your family? Or this you just... is a good one. And I'm yeah. very thankful for I had parents that were very um, supportive mm. and nurturing. This is, makes such a, all the difference. And you see it happen all the time of just parents that don't support their children's interest and then yeah. the kids stop and you talk to so many people yeah. where oh i used to love drawing and then they stopped because they felt they had to whereas we didn't have that and everyone in my family did something creative or something they were passionate about mm. and they all have careers in it now it all it takes is a sort of a inclination and just don't tell them no and let them find their path but yeah everyone a lot of times when you tell someone that you do art for a living and they're amazed as if it's like how did you do that but <laughs> yeah. all, you, all, you, all it is is just the doing of it oh well, that's a realization too once you move past fame yeah these, these are the drivers it's yeah. getting famous or getting rich yeah. but you know you hit a certain age where neither not, I, neither of those matter that much you just need enough to pay your bills and go out for a meal every month my friends that have extreme wealth it it, it, it seems more like a a burden there's a there's a sort of you know it creates jealousy it creates this sort of weight maybe even you know i think it's hard i think there's limits you don't you want to extreme on anything and fame again especially in comic book fame it's not <laughs> and not that i've had a taste of it but i've seen enough and it, it, right. it's nothing it's it's yeah. you, you get people going after you yeah. and you don't have any benefits you're not rich you well, only <laughs> you only true. have a name out yeah, there that people true. can jump on it it's fame without yeah it's not worth it the other thing is once you remove yourself from your identity of work, it's fun. It's fun right. to be nothing. It's fun to just go for walks with your wife and yeah. look at birds and sit on benches just to exist, watching sunsets, mm -hmm. all these things. It, it is a great way to spend life. Oh, and I think it is that thing about just questioning and searching. If I am something, just some, I like to sit and think this is a great, how I spend my day. I would love to do that full time. <laughs> and I, well, I do mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> that's a nice place to be in. Maybe that's part of getting older is we stop caring so much about the drive. But, you know, I don't think that's true for everyone. I still know people that are still driven to do, to get the title, to, to move up in the, in the yeah. ladder and getting lost in that. Like, I guess maybe we're different where maybe we've had a taste of that and it didn't, it didn't fill a gap that we yeah, yeah. we knew more of it wasn't going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I've had, like you said, the, the comic book fame or, you know, the the income. And now I haven't had a paying job 10 months. <laughs> the savings are going away. That is a reality on the side that I, I need to get some work. Yeah, I can't live like me too. I'm this. finally hitting a point yeah. where financially I've got to start working again. The, the other thing about removing yourself from what people think of you or these ideas is you spend less money too. If you just worry about the basics and yeah. your existence as it's, as it is, is happiness enough. What are, what are the basics on? Oh, you know, well, a roof over your head and food in your fridge, you know, some basic entertainment, but yeah. these sort of, you don't need things. I, I have some friends that still constantly buy the newest thing, constantly things. This is a thing that's very important to, wean yourself off of is the need for validation through objects uh, i guess if you want to be financially like not have to worry about money so much if you make tons of money then go wild sure why don't you but i i think there's we spend too much money we need too many things most people in general and if you if you cut back cooked more often for yourself versus going out this is is this the conversation i'm going to do but the idea that we don't need to work as much as we do you know, we, you and I have been talking about discipline lately of these things that we want yeah. to get better. Some more exercise, some getting off the phone so much, quitting some vices, these sort of yeah. ideas. Um, and then, you know, you sort of kick yourself for being, oh, I'm so, I could do so much better. I'm so bad at these things. But when you look at the whole list of things that could be problems and it, even people you know, there's a, it's, you, you can do a double check and see the things that you don't have. You know, yeah. like that you aren't addicted to, say, or you aren't, right. there aren't vices, like if you have debt or not. These sort of elements are, well, whoa, I'm so grateful I don't have that one. Yeah, that's a good point. I think I, I've been talking a lot in the podcast about kind of, it's not like I'm trying to highlight negative behavior. It's kind of what I've focused on in the early episodes. But I think it's a good thing to also recognize uh, triumphs. Yeah, right. absolutely. And, I, and we don't do enough of celebrating our own, yeah. even small triumphs. It's huge. Always thinking positively is one of my main things, I think. Are, yeah. and, I, and I think I've tricked my brain into defaulting, which is great, doing gratitude and whatnot. But celebrating triumphs, like these wins, the you know having these injuries is, is rough <laughs> and enduring some pain. But on the day where you feel a bit better, actively better, woo, boom, yeah. that felt so good. That uh, tears of joy. Yeah. Oh yeah, a, a stop in the in the daily pain, or it feels like oh I'm on the mend. Boom. Yeah, it's so good. Actually, I, I want to talk about that really quickly. I mentioned in an early episode about uh, when I had clarity about my drinking, and that was something that you and I talked about, and, and it kind of ties into what you're saying now about you and I have kind of created a pact. Yeah. Um, for, for kind of bettering ourselves, so. Since well, we coming, quit drinking together at yeah, the we same quit, time. Yeah, exactly. We quit drinking and I relapsed. Yeah. You know, um, I, I couldn't, I think I lasted about a year and there was some stuff that happened in Sweden. Um, it, it, it's an excuse, but it was. I, I, I relapsed on alcohol. I, it started subtle. Oh, it's been a year. I got this, right? And that's always the, the demon of addiction. It, it just needs an entry point. And then so I, I had a drink with a friend and then, and then it was another drink four months later three months and it's got less and less and less time more and more drink but anyway so what I, what I wanted to talk about was how we had made that pact and uh it was really helpful in that first year even though I relapsed it was something that really helped me kind of grab on to sticking to it and I think it's something that I encourage a lot of men to do is I talk a lot about talking to your brothers and and confiding but also make packs yeah you know I feel so, for instance, we're on one, one now, mm -hmm. right? So we talked about this about a month ago. Let's, you wanted to do less screens, and I wanted to get my fitness up, you know, because I was, I've gained weight, and I, I, I got better. Smoking is the one that I always come back to. And so this pact, I've five weeks off smoking now. And, Great. But, right but, I, but I've had <laughs> moments where I'm just, 
But then I think about our pack. Can't, I can't do it because nice. I, I am accountable, right? That's, that's I mean, it goes Alcoholics Anonymous. Someone that you confide in or that is your, your sponsor. And essentially, that's what we're doing. Uh, but it doesn't stop me from every time I drive by a guy smoking a fresh <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> Last year, I did cold dives in the ocean every first of every month because my cousin would come on Saturday morning uh-huh. and we would do this these cold plunges in the ocean together, which yeah. is really fun. But I wouldn't have done it if he didn't show up. No way I would. I talk the talk. I'm like, you guys don't cold plunge? You yeah. know, like, I, whatever. Oh, yeah, I was very into cold plunging all, all my whole life. Someone mm. holding you accountable. Someone yeah. holding your feet to the fire or yeah. head under the ice water. It's, you know. It's real. Yeah, it helps. And it makes you do it. And you're, you're thankful to be doing it. Of course, I prefer to be smoking, <laughs> but I, I mean, I feel better, especially after the few the few weeks out. Oh man, my energy's up, and I'm going for jogs now with with my Great. daughter. That's you know, excellent. so what do you think is special about a male friendship? A yeah. lot of what we've talked about with the Book of Man, a lot of ideas was sort of a reflection on an era where, you know, hmm. men were struggling or perceived yeah. as this sort of idea, and just maybe no role models no yeah. structure and when we had certainly ideas of what made a good man these things that yeah. we aspire to be you know some combination of wisdom and bravery you know these ideas and we wanted to represent that in this this book this sort of concept working through our own <laughs> flaws and failings with these characters you know, sort of <laughs> they, they looked exactly like us. <laughs> yeah that's very funny and i still like that idea honestly yeah um, it's, not, it's not bad yeah, that was born out of working on a book, The Rat Queens, yeah, where yeah. we, and you had pointed out last time we talked that we were kind of doing a parody we of were. the book, yeah. which is, has a tendency to like, I'm, you know, kind of a troll. We both have troll tendencies of us, of comedy, you know, trickster type stuff. It's very easy to fall into these sort of sure. ideas of making it a but gag. But also we were, I had, that was post everything that I've talked about. I had been pretty traumatized and I was very resentful. Yeah. Right? Which, where, is, which is interesting. And so that I always turn resentment and anger into comedy right like that's that's where my voice will exist um and i think you were perfect for that because the relationship we have we do like to joke and we have so it, it was kind of an I, it wasn't intentional that i was parodying my own work which is wild if you think about it <laughs> there's some weird layers to that but. yeah but but in that book of man was more the issues we did want to deal yes. with that rat queens just couldn't yeah it would never touch and then so that was directed at men say if, yeah. if rat queens was a a cast of women and so, so that's why going towards this podcast for being about men is sort of where the catalyst of a lot of these ideas came from I think. yeah it's it's really um this has been something on my heart for a long time and yeah i, re- I remember i remember it was it was you and a couple other guys here in vancouver when i when i got when got canceled <laughs> essentially um those those very clear to me that um, having those relationships really did save me. And I talk a bit about how with my wife that, yes, she was an absolute support to me. I don't want that to be misunderstood. She was a rock. And I've said numerous times that she probably should have left me. You know, I'm grateful that she didn't. But there's something unique about the male experience and having male friends around and i i don't know there's a there's some kind of mystery to it that i I, i'm trying to understand even in this conversation but in general in the podcast i know it's meaningful but it's something i've been chasing for a long time i think it's rare i think men don't especially as we get older we lose touches Mm. touch with because it has to do with the vulnerability it has to putting yourself out there and you know seeing if someone's up for going out Mm. this is like creating these groups maybe whatever sports league or some some reason to get together i'm an introvert i'm not i don't need to go out that often yeah. but i do need friends certainly and it's great to have this i'm so happy that you moved back into town yeah i'd lost another good guy friend i had a very very masculine blue collar bud that was one of my good friends and yeah. it was always good to be around him because he was yeah. very like you would definitely feel like you were hanging with the boys if yeah. you're hanging out with this guy and it was great but he left and i'm sort of mostly hanging with my wife and her friends which is great they're brilliant women it's really nice you know and i think conversation is always intellectual smart i guess going the idea of male friendships and i was trying to think of in the past where i would hang out with a crew of dudes but it was usually based on boozing you know you'd go out and have drinks every weekend you go watch hockey and wings and beers and do a pub crawl and all that stuff is i don't know if i miss it necessarily 
some some parts but i don't miss the drinking I and mean, good that we are hanging out without the alcohol that can happen because sometimes when you remove these elements is is there anything in common right. outside of you know uh the weed thing though too i was gonna say you had relapsed on alcohol yeah. i never did which was nice but it, we did have weed here and yeah. during the lockdown you had you know, there's sort of like you had to do one still. vice yeah. yeah you almost had to I, I you can't raw dog reality in these times. some people might but it's very difficult well, they, i mean that's kind of what i'm going through right now the cigarettes were basically my last one yeah and i i mean not gonna lie i love it <laughs> it's the best um i'm off all my all my vices and so now i'm trying to replace it with healthier behavior which is going for a jog in the morning i'm trying to think i think screens are probably still one i really want to get rid of that being such a dominant force in my life that's something i still struggle with we did last year as a family we took 30 days off amazing which is was i look back at that was one of my favorite times great because because you couldn't default to well let's watch a show we had to literally go what do we do with and we read books together you're such a board game family which is really nice even just seeing that is the interaction is good this is human interaction not screen it's way better one of the things i did uh, during this this uh, our current discipline attack Mm. is just removing the phone from the bedroom just don't bring oh. it to bed with you. Okay. This is a very good one. Uh, and not that hard to pull off. And I feel like the screen time has gone way down. You know, you That's wake great. up in the middle of the night sometimes and you just got to meditate, think, whatever, right. scroll some oh, new okay. stories. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that one too. That's a good starter one I think, yeah. for the screen shut off. Yeah. Okay. What about desserts and pastries? This is this thing. I want to talk about this food. <laughs> food as an element of reward. You know, sure. so if you've got a vice, if there's the thing, yeah. or maybe this idea of love. I was thinking about this on the way here, of how love is the is the greatest thing. It's the best thing, but when you overindulge in something, it's no longer love. Mm-hmm. You're abusing thing. So th- these are these ideas of this, all the things we really enjoy, just not taking it to excess. I think, I think that's yeah. I mean, that's the most most important thing. You know. F- it goes with everything. You can drink, sure. You can have weed if you want. But I always say, you know, as a recovered addict or in recovery addict is just be honest with yourself about what you're doing. If you are if you have some anxiety and you're having a nightcap, ah, it's just to help me sleep. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Right? And there's only two things. Are you doing it just for a bit of enjoyment or are you doing it to numb? And it's a right. very very fine line but you have to be honest with yourself i think if you show restraint for these things and become mindful about it everything is doable and worthwhile so So it's like say my wife mostly vegetarian so we don't eat a lot of meat during Mm -hmm. the week maybe no meat during the week but i still because as a flavor food guy not cutting out all of you know meat proteins but i have it so rarely now that every time i do it mm. seems very this was an animal this was like something of value it's a life so you know appreciate it make sure it's cooked well do it properly and really appreciate it versus you just inhaling gray mass you know like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one example or, the, or like a whole bag of tostitos yeah which is, which is sure. my favorite uh, <laughs> thing to do in if it brings joy i think especially if you're not on it and you're trying to kick something else yeah. hey more power to yeah. you the dopamine is essential again having these injuries this sure. is where a relapse big time looking at the phone because sometimes you just need a distraction the problem with pain management you know is your brain's focused on it especially at night what else are you going to think about can't not unless you know you can sort of trick your brain but it's like brain training it's like meditation yeah. techniques it's, you can't go to sleep when it's you're, you're you're trying to focus on a purple triangle in the center of your you know pain pain reduction <laughs> techniques you know another thing that's very maybe the male experience of being mm. not not universally of course but just more likely to be stiff you know <laughs> my wife and her friends all do yoga they, yeah. they're they're very flexible <laughs> all my guy friends are stiff bricks that only lift things you know these are good to talk about this, this stuff. is this and, is this is just a small taste of the rest of our lives <laughs> of suffering hey, i think it's a shot over the bow it's a warning you know there's always time to course correct that's true one of the things that i i try to do in the podcast is is be vulnerable and to talk about things that are weaknesses yeah I good would i love you, that That's would you great. would you be willing to share some of that? <laughs> you you have a weakness that perhaps <laughs> oh or something that you struggled with recently that you overcame I, I noticed when i reflect on doing the podcast that i there's things that pop up because normally i don't actually really have a plan for instance we were supposed to do this on the last episode mm-hmm. 
And then, then the construction, which is still happening. In case in the background you're hearing a dog, a baby, and a construction, it's all happening at once. But I just sit down and, and you know, for me, I pray before and then just I want to know, like, what topic to cover. And then as I'm doing that, oh, yeah, I, this two weeks ago, I was being a bastard, you know, and I was being... Oh, sure. It's kind of this reflection of my own... Sure, I'm trying to set a good example, but I still have these things in my library where I'm an idiot. I keep repeating the same mistakes, and even oh, though I'm always aware does of them, happen, you know? Yeah. It's funny just how time has sped up or you get older. Mm. Well, there's so much that's happened in just the world these last yeah. little bits, and it does feel like when I think of my past self, it feels like a different person. I constantly feel like I'm a new individual all the time. It's interesting. Some would say it's called like burning through karma, something like that. You're a whole new entity every once in a while. It's yeah. a fascinating yeah. thing. But then you, sometimes when I remember past selves, it's hard to even relate to those things. But there's through lines of, say, positive traits and negative traits tied to, you know, the, the, the avatar that I'm in, <laughs> the, <laughs> this self. So let me think of some flaws there's always some i think the is and this is maybe born also too out of being maybe an introverted person that's very insular it's just me and my wife you know mm -hmm. you create almost a reality within yourself that's pretty positive but it can be selfish too i've been thinking lots about the idea of helping the outside world again my wife mm -hmm. very activist a lot of young women she's always trying to do some good in the world always trying to sign me up for some sort of uh <laughs> <laughs> you know helping the homeless yeah, we've done sure. some a lot of a lot of like uh volunteer work That's which great. i don't know if i'd sign up for it without her That's you know <laughs> i'm just too much of an introvert i'd rather send good vibes or something right. like that like do something that i feel like works if i've got a flaw it's that i get too in my own head sometimes ah, and forget to interact with <laughs> the human space yeah. Yeah. and this is these these are these things that are very important and actively trying to make the world a better space mm -hmm. we interact in it all the time vancouver's got a lot of issues with homeless drug addiction and there's you, you get so used to walking by someone on the street and not even making eye contact this is a, another great thing i traveled recently to the uk which was a lot of fun mm -hmm. I hadn't traveled in years and uh, it was amazing, amazing. And of course, you went to Sweden. This yeah. is like, a whole, you live there. This yeah. is great. But interacting with people from a, oh, you know, you become friendly or you, 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 you lose all the, the things that are born of where you are, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but Vancouver, I want to just become more, I want to help people if I see someone in trouble versus just ignoring it, which I think they sort of train you to do. Because a lot of times, a lot of times you aren't doing any good. You know, you're just getting in the way and that happens. But learning if you see someone passed out on the is, do you know what to do we did an interesting uh, oh I, I and i'm the language and all this but it was just like how to do naproxen or help someone when the uh, like um, or, yes yeah. just in case because yeah. we, we ran into a scenario where someone was looking for a kit and we was like oh well we don't have one what do we do should we have the information yeah. to do this this is good and i haven't done anything with it again so it's maybe false and just like I sort of know what to do which is good I haven't actually helped anyone mm -hmm. But these are these ideas of trying to help the outside space. Wisdom is kind of figuring out if you have the will to help people, wisdom is understanding how you can with your personality, your heart. What is the way that you can, as a leader, affect change? I'm not going to go out and, you know, I, I probably struggle with maybe doing just on the street charity work because I guess sure. I'm like you, I'm a little bit quieter. But I would be much more behind the scenes sitting down one on one and talking with people. You know, it's, it's just understanding your heart. That's hugely valid. And I think yeah. I'm, you know, more like that. Just trying to do right by people, you know, and not be selfish. Yeah, it's hard to not be in your own head and remove that arrogance and selfishness mm -hmm. and all these sort of elements that we build into ourselves. What's um what's one piece of advice that you can give someone if you were looking back at twenty year old Owen? in Regina, <laughs> partying with the boys and, and the wings and the beer. What's something that you would tell him that you wish he knew? Oh, geez, there's a lot, I think. Yeah, it's all one. interesting. Give me, give me one. Although, I mean, I wouldn't want to change anything. Of course but, not. But I think there, if, if there's something to be felt, it's, oh, the value of forgiveness 
for yourself, I think mm -hmm. certainly for everyone, yeah. you know, try and be, show grace. And I think forgiveness as a concept is very helpful. Yeah. Um, as in, you know, just try and see everything from different other people's perspectives and try mm -hmm. to understand that everyone's a human. And if they're very flawed, it's probably something made them flawed. No one's a, yeah. there's no uh, super villains in this world. I think what you've defined is really that that is one of the great follies of youth is not understanding that. Yeah. Not understanding that everything's pretty complex. Ev everyone yeah. has Oh, reasons, I've got a good know? one. I think about, I feel like when I was younger, I was very, you know, sort of shamed and embarrassed by actions. You know, maybe did something stupid that was like very, you know, and you'd like kick yourself and you're in the shower and you'll remember some <laughs> thing you said to someone, too many drinks or something. And you're I'm an idiot. I'm so dumb. One, forgive yourself for that. Two, look at it as like a comedy. If you're watching it as a movie and a character you were watching did that, would you be like, what an idiot? Or would you be like, that is funny that that guy did that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. embarrassing. Don't it's take it so seriously. funny. Yeah. You know, you're watching uh, Ricky Gervais or George Costanza do this action. And you're like, <laughs> you hate those characters? Or do you think they're funny? So, you know, once you view yourself separately, yeah. remove yourself, watch, watch your actions yeah. from a distance. It's not so bad. If anything, it's just hilarious. Well, yeah, what you're talking about is humility. Yeah, it sure. really is being able to laugh at yourself. I, I, I really try to, especially when I'm sharing stories on the podcast, I try, I actually am laughing because I, I realize how stupid some of the stuff I do is <laughs> really important to laugh at yourself. Oh, I, that's one of my pieces of advice too, mm -hmm. is to constantly just laugh. I, I feel like I've got a joker in my head that laughs time, especially when things get too serious, a default, uh, you know, a thing that goes off that'll just like laugh and be like, this is uh, hilarious yeah. even if it's sort of a stressful or wild situation sure. the absurdity of it can yeah. sometimes click in and wow i yeah. am experiencing this amazing yeah. this is yeah, like totally. a gag i think even yeah. even pain even these things that what the worst not the there's always worse i mean great gratitude of course for everything just to be in this space is so lucky all of course but when you're struggling we all struggle uh even the idea of pain can be funny oh this is the hard part too i feel like that what one of the things is just feeling like a invalid like feeling yeah. for my poor wife having to look after me for three weeks oh i am embarrassed by yeah. this yeah and it, it, this is just the beginning <laughs> i hope not all right man hey uh, thanks for coming on this has been awesome i mean yeah. this is just a key, we, this is just what we do yeah now in this and a good sort of test experiment yeah. of a, of a I might have to interview may have to get a studio um, where there's not constant noise but all right well thank you everyone for uh, tuning in and uh, like I said I would love to hear from anyone that listens and, and do a similar conversation and I've got a few more lined up actually next week two more episodes that I'm recording with guests which is pretty fun oh nice um, and I think it'll be as a great of experience <laughs> this, is, this has been awesome man thank you so much great on great right. thanks for having me all right thanks everyone for listening God bless Bye.